Hello and welcome to Money Tips. It's Charles Kelly. Uh, hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, wanted to uh, tell you about some things today that might, might interest you. Uh, when I was growing up, I uh, lived in a, in a family where you know we didn't have much money, so we make it a point of, of buying the cheapest stuff. My mum would buy the cheapest food, the cheapest everything, and I, I was kind of embarrassed about that. You know, I, I, I didn't think that was uh, very cool at the time. Just, you know, I, I would go to school with the cheapest, uh, the, the, the cheapest kind of gear and, you know, we would buy the cheapest, go into the cheapest shops, which in those days was actually Sainsbury's. And, you know, but now it, it seems that being stingy and being tight and, and saving money here and there has become almost the new cool. You know, you, you've even got like, middle class people shopping in Aldi and Lidl and you know pulling up in, in their Bentleys outside of Lidl. Now they would probably make an excuse like, oh, it's it's for the wine. Yeah, so there's a rather cheeky Bordeaux I can buy in Lidl for ten or a bottle. And I, I always go to Lidl or Aldi for the wine. But actually they're probably going to, to save a bit of money. And I've seen even very wealthy people saving money and not being embarrassed about it, but using coupons or, you know, asking for a deal. You know, I, I was the son of a billionaire and he he bought some uh, wine in a shop in, in Manila and he, and he asked for his discount because they were uh, a big buyer of wine and uh, they, they, you know, they owned a lot of uh, big superstores. And, and he asked for his discount on a bill, probably, you know, 30 pounds. So it, it's it's no longer embarrassing to be stingy and tight. You know, you've got these comparison sites asking people to save money. And it's a good thing. I mean, I, I write about this in my book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. And, uh, you know, I talk about saving money, how to, to manage your money and how not to lose your money, like many of the stars who have literally lost it all and, and gone bankrupt by, you know, being the opposite to stingy and just blowing every penny. So, and, and, and obviously on Money Tips, you know, moneytipsdaily.com and, and on Money Tips podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, we talk about saving money, not not all of them, because, you know, I don't think it's enough just to save money and make, make cost cutting uh, exercises like, like a company can't just, you know, make money by by cutting costs. You've got to actually go and generate money through through work or through business. But obviously not wasting money is, is a good start. Now, there is a, a movement in, in it started in America called the, the FIRE movement which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, FIRE, F-R-I-E, and uh, F-I-R-E, FIRE, uh, Financial Independence Retire Early Movement. Now, they've taken being stingy and being tight to, to a whole new level. You know, they, they uh, have really gone to town on this, and, and th their movement suggests that, you know, if you can save up to 70, 75 percent of your income, that's yeah, you heard it right. 70 to 75 percent, not 25 percent save and spend the rest. No, 75 percent of your income, then, you know, and you invest that into, say, a tracker fund or other assets that you, you can retire early. Now, apparently, the, the, the movement's been going since around 2010 with millennials. Um, and, you know, they're, they're looking to which I also suggest ways in, in my book, you know, getting out of the rat race, um, you know, using leverage to, to get out of the rat race. Because, you know, if you're not using leverage in some form or another, whether it's borrowing money, buying assets, making your money work for you, then you're probably someone else's leverage. You are working in a company where you are their leverage. You know what leverage is, right? Leverage is using a lever to lift something discovered by some ancient Greek Pythagoras or somebody like that who, who uh, used, who discovered the, 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 the theory of le leverage where the longer the, the lever, the easier it was to lift. And that, you know, that's still a, a rule that applies today. And, and using leverage in business terms means using the leverage of borrowing, using the leverage of other people's money or using the leverage of having staff and hiring people uh, to, to, to do your job. And, and so you can make more. And produce more. So if you if you're not using leverage in some way yourself, you're probably somebody else's leverage by working for someone. And and this movement, the idea is to get out of that that rat race and retire early. And what they do is they maximise in their, their their savings rate by finding ways 
uh, to, to increase income and decrease expenses. They do go to some extreme lengths, like making your own clothes and you know boiling up endless bags of pulses and uh, you know really living on the on on the cheap and looking for those days when you can get yellow stickers and always going to the supermarkets late so you can pick up the bargains. Well, you know. <laughs> Now that's become like a, a bun fight, hasn't it? You know, when you see the stickers gone, everyone's crowding around this trolley and, and, the, and the staff are like scared of them. They're putting the stickers on, you know. It, it's not something to be ashamed of. Even dumpster diving, you know, taking out food that has expired, you know, that sort of thing. So this is, has become fashionable now. And, you know, their, their idea is that uh, they, they propose, they, they have a 4% rule guide that if you can make enough money, to, to live off by earning 4% on your money, then you, you can reduce the, the retirement age. And that, that is a good goal to, to have because most people don't save near enough for, for their retirement. You know, these guys are suggesting saving 70, 75% of your income. And uh, look at this, at a savings rate of 10%, it would take nine years of work to save up one year's of living expenses, right? And that means one year's living expenses where you could uh, just live for it for a year without anything. So j just imagine that, 10% of your income to, to, to one year. Now, obviously, saving 10% over 40 years is not going to give you enough, is it, to, to retire, just saving 10% of your income. And I'm not suggesting that you can retire just by saving. You, you can, you know, if you, if you work hard at it and you invest it, then yes, you, you can save and have a good retirement but it's harder to do than if you invest and make money on your money and make your money work hard for you now at a savings rate of 25 percent it would take three years of work to save one year of living expenses now i would suggest everyone should have six months to a year's of living expenses in in the bank as emergency money because you never know what's going to happen you never know if you're going to be laid off you know most self-employed people from my financial services days most self-employed people I knew had very little in the way of a backup. Um, they were the business. It was their hands, their labor that created the business. They were the plumber, the electrician, the roofer, the builder. And, you know, if they became injured in any way, they couldn't work. And, and most of them didn't have any insurance to cover them and that they would reject insurance. I'd say, well, you, you should have this insurance. I can't afford that insurance, you know, uh, I, I'll, I'll manage somehow. So most people don't have any backup plan. That goes on to say, at a savings rate of 50%, so if you save half of your income, it would take um, one year of work to save one year of living expenses. Um, I'm not quite sure how that would work, but that, that would be on a living expenses where your living expenses are, are quite low. So from this example, it concluded that the time to retirement decreases significantly as the savings rate increase. Well, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Really? <laughs> um, for this reason, th those pursuing the fire attempt to save 50 percent or more of their income. Um, and, and look, at 75 percent, if you save 70 percent, you're 75 percent of your income. It would take less than 10 years of work to accumulate 25 times the average annual living expenses suggested by the the 4 percent rule. In other words, 4 percent means that you the capital you've got in the bank, you only draw out 4%. So if you had that invested in a managed type of fund or a mutual fund or a tracker fund uh, in, into shares, you, you should be able to make 4% on, on that money uh, in order to, to live. So you, don't, you never touch your capital. Okay. Now, critics argue that you know maybe this fire movement is really only for the people who are already a little bit rich and, and wealthy. And you know how are you going to save that amount on a low income um, you know I, I think if you, if you look at someone on a low income now saving for a house for instance how the hell are they going to save you know 70 50 percent of their income when they're, they're already saving for a house and they may be paying rent of up to 50 or 60 percent of their income now so how they're going to do that I don't know I think the only way you could do this is if you, you stayed at home and living with your parents while you save that amount of money, then it's possible. You know, you take your sandwiches to work, you don't go to Starbucks and you, you really budget on things. You know, one of the things about firemen, they suggest walking and cycling everywhere, which is fine. But how can you do that when you might live 20 miles outside of the city and you have to commute in? Uh, so some of, the, some of the stuff is is a bit unrealistic. But, you know, if you aim towards that, then sure. You know, I think at least you should aim for 30% of your income to save. 
Otherwise, you know, you're never going to have enough money uh, to live on in, in retirement. So, so there are some critics uh, who argue that the, that the stuff here is, is a bit unrealistic, um, especially, for, for instance, if you're saving for a house um, and then you buy a house. And then, you know, I found this myself. Most of your money goes in on the mortgage, on, on your house. And then kids, you know, it's great when you're young and single and you're living at home, you can save all this money. But, you know, try try having kids and good luck with, with trying to save that amount of money when, when you've got kids and a mortgage and, and all the rest of it. Um, and I, I know that the 4% rule sounds ca- catchy, but th- that would be based on the returns from the stock market in the last few years. I, d- I don't know whether we're going to have the, the same uh, returns in a few years over the next 10 years and and if you know the stock market goes down as is expected to do you know in the in the next year or two and I, I think it is due for a big correction that could mess up people's you know early retirement plans as well uh, so we'll, we'll have to see how that works out um, you know how you save and how you leverage your money is, is, is your business um, some people might say that you know, rather than try and do everything yourself, hire people to do some of the, 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 the tasks that are not productive for you, like cleaning, for instance, if you hire a cleaner, but you can use your time better to, to make money. You know, if you can make 20 or 30 pounds an hour and you can hire a cleaner for 10 pounds an hour, why not do that rather than trying to, to do all of that work yourself? So uh, it, it's just an interesting way of looking at it, uh, fire movement, whatever. I mean, maybe I should have the money tips movement and uh, help people to to retire early in that in that way. Now, one way you can save, and this is a more practical way than say, you know, just say, well, I'll walk ten miles a day to work, because um, you know that's going to take up a lot of time and energy. Is is on mortgages? A, a lot of people have a mortgage. At least fifty or sixty percent of, of people in the country would probably own a house, and most of them have a mortgage. Um, now, there is a mortgage price war on at the moment. The lenders are really falling over themselves to lend, especially to, to residential borrowers, first-time buyers, etc. And there's some really good deals out there at the moment. You know, with a big enough deposit, you can get a, a five-year fixed at 1.64%. 1.64%, that's, that's crazy rates. You can even get a 15-year fixed. Imagine that, you know exactly what your mortgage is going to cost for the next 15 years at 2.5% or 2.55. You know, a lot of first-time buyers are now getting 95% mortgages again. And I talked a few weeks ago about types of mortgages where you can borrow the whole lot, but based on maybe your, your parents guaranteeing the loan or uh, putting a, a security bond with, with the bank so that you can borrow 100%. It's, it's another way of using other people's money. So there are ways of buying houses now and prices are, are fallen back. So it's a good buyer's market. at the moment. You can get deals out there. So most of these things, there's cashbacks are coming back with a, you get a mortgage, you get a thousand pound cashback. But remember, these things are costed. So that cashback, they're not giving it to you. They're, they're adding it to the mortgage in some other way through a fee or whatever. So look at the whole picture, not just, oh, there's a cashback. That, that must be the best deal. Look at the cost of the mortgage over a five, 10 year or 25 year period. Look at the overall cost of the mortgage on the quote and see what these things are really costing you. Because a lot of these low fixed rates have quite hefty fees. So, yeah, I can give you a fixed rate at, at 1.65%, but there's a fee of five grand. I'm not saying there is on that one. So 1.65% with a with a three or four thousand pound fee is not really 1.64%. It's, it's nonsense. Um, th- these these deals are, you know, costed. So they offer you with one hand, uh, a, say, a 1% fixed rate. But it, if it's got a 5% fee, and the fixed rate is over five years. Really, what is it? It's like uh, a two percent fixed rate because you've got the five percent added on uh, over the five year, you know, immediately. So uh, I don't know. Um, you, you've got to look at these and how, things and how they're costed. But it's definitely a good time to borrow money at the moment uh, in, if, if you're looking for a mortgage. And prices of properties have come down. It's it's always better, in my opinion, to buy rather than rent. And, you know, rents are quite high at the moment. Uh, so maybe, you know, try and try and get that house. Um, prices in, in London have fallen back in the last few years. And the, the, and the Nationwide, as I said yesterday, said that prices around the country are, are sort of almost flatlining. Yet borrowing is actually up. Mortgage approvals are actually up. So if we get this Brexit thing out of the way, maybe 
uh, people can you know start settling down and just buying again and i believe you know rates are, are are low also in america and donald trump wants the federal reserve to to cut rates right he wants the federal reserve to cut back rates because of this ongoing trade war uh, with, with with china and another way another asset to buy is um, if if you're nervous about the stock market is gold uh, the the Forbes magazine suggests that gold could crash through the sixteen hundred dollar per ounce and, and even touch eighteen hundred dollars an ounce where it was a few years ago. Um, gold is a good is 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 quite a good. Uh, it's it's actually up in on the year to date nineteen percent. Silver's up seven percent year to date. So gold is going up as the markets get nervous. People put their money into safer havens like like gold. Okay, gold is okay, but you know you can't earn an interest off gold it just sort of sits there it can sometimes cost you money to store gold because you, you might have to put it in a bank vault or you might have to increase your insurance so I wouldn't put all your money into gold but it's it's quite a good way of hedging money how do you buy gold um, jewelry is okay but jewelry is not really uh, a good way to buy gold it's quite an expensive way to buy gold because obviously jewelers uh, have gold as their raw material and then they make it into something and sell it to you at a profit. So, you know, you're not really getting the the full gold per per ounce of, of value in in that piece of jewelry. But you can get gold in coins. You can buy coins. Uh, the American would be the eagle, Canadian maple leaf, the sovereign or the Britannia coins. You know, in some countries they are uh, actual legal tender, uh, and you know you can buy those coins fairly cheaply. You can buy a gold or silver coin for maybe 20 or 30 pounds you know it depends on the size of the coin obviously um, and you can also buy at the you know at another slightly cheaper way of buying it would be to buy small bars of gold or silver um, you know they would cost more money but the, the price per ounce is cheaper and again that they, they be, can be quite bulky to, to, to hold and, and store and that sort of thing but it's just a hedge and you know gold is quite liquid you can always get your money back on it and you know it's it's a hedge against uh so you know mo most financial advisors would probably say put a small percentage maybe five or ten percent of your overall portfolio into to something like gold but it's certainly done well over the last couple of years i'm not recommending you buy gold you know because i'm not your financial advisor you, you know you've got to take your own uh view on that and take your own advice uh, but but most financial advisors probably wouldn't tell you to buy gold because they, they, they're trying to sell you their their mutual funds or their unit trusts. Uh, so anyway, look out for that and we'll see what happens to gold in the next few years. Um, it's, it's a long term investment like most of these things. And I, I put a little bit of money into gold or silver because I, I think long term it, it will go up if, if the markets go down. So that's all for now. Um, uh, I'd say the, 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 the word of the day is, is the fire movement. What does fire mean? Well, in this case, it's uh, it's it's a way of, of retiring early. So if you think of fire, financial independence, retire early movement, I'm not saying join that movement, but think about um, ways that you can retire early or at least save something for your retirement. Because unless you start thinking about it now, especially if you're young, you know, you're just not going to get there. And believe me, millions and millions of people will be unable to retire because they just won't have the money in, in which to retire uh, on. Uh, they're just not going to get there. And also you've got to remember that, you know, look at the hurdles. When you set a goal, you've got to look ahead at, at what hurdles might arise along the way and how you're going to get over those hurdles. And one of them is, is could you get ill? You know, in, in retirement, could you need nursing care? And that, that can be very, very expensive. Uh, so do, do think about that and Think about how you you are going to retire, and you know have a look at have a look at my book. We we suggest ways of making extra money so that you're not just relying on, you know your your uh, saving out of income, which which can be difficult for young couples. I realise that, but you know you may need to go out and do a little bit more and earn that little bit of extra money. You know most of us in in the West will work eight nine hours a day, five days a week. You've got a lot of spare time. Unlike Jack Ma's recommendation, which I talked about a couple of days ago, Ali Baba, who suggested that, you know, you should all work 12 hours a day, nine till nine, six days a week. So that doesn't give you much time, you know, to, to, to do anything else on the side to earn money. But people in the West, 
you know, they have lots of free and leisure time. In fact, there was an article today that said uh, many, four out of uh, most British workers would, would prefer to work four days a week, maybe longer four days. Well, of course you would, yeah, and then you can lie around on a Friday, but that doesn't really help a business that needs people there for five days a week. But I, I'm sure most of us have got the time where we could use that time to earn a bit of extra money on the side. It could be a small business, it could be an Amazon business, that you don't have to go and start up a shop. You can run an online shop. Uh, it could be just doing something like a, a part-time job at the weekends. There's always ways of earning a bit of extra money. As long as you use that money to save, then it's a good thing. Uh, you know, we're, we're too much into consumer spending at the moment. And, you know, another way of saving money is to buy secondhand clothes in Oxfam shops. I mean, there's so much good stuff that's thrown away nowadays. Um, you could save a fortune just by doing that recycling clothes, using recycled clothes. There's lots of ways of saving money and generating money. So check out my book and keep listening to Money Tips. Uh, you can find me on moneytipsdaily.com or on iTunes or Stitcher. And thank you for everybody that has tuned in live. Hi to everyone. I can see Bea there, Cinderina, lots of people there tuning in, Matty and uh, Winnie. So th thanks for, for tuning in there and I'll hopefully speak to you soon. So have a great weekend. And I will speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.